Hello everybody, it's the Midlands Outdoors, back with Exploring the Black Country on the Dudley number two canal at the moment, which stretches all the way down, goes all past Old Hill. So you can just see the Gossy Hill Tunnel, just right by the side of the river, date of 1881, dating really far back a bit. Stretches 509 metres and goes right away under to meet the Coombs Wood section where the Stuarts and Lloyds used to be many, many years ago. Just panning around to show you one more time of this really nice tunnel. You can just see right away in there, very dark, very spooky. If you listen to this, hello, echoes all the way down. It is a really long tunnel and what's surprising about it, if you've seen my last Explore in the Black Country video, how it, the ceiling goes at several heights, so it's big at one part and very small. If you've not seen it, I'll drop a link in the description so you can see inside the Gosta Hill Tunnel. But well, I would love to go back through there one more time. Well, it's so old. Just imagine many, many years ago, this was used to transport coal, goods from Stuarts to Lloyds many, many years ago across the canal to send across the Birmingham Canal Network. And what's interesting where we're going, many, many years ago, once more, there used to be old industry, brickworks, collieries, and we're going to be exploring like a canal side section where a basin went in many, many years ago. So I'll tell you a bit of history when I get there and some more stuff. I've never knew about it. I've only discovered it a few days ago. So I thought I might do one more video of this uh, place one more time. Station Road was quite interesting because it used to be a farm where there were some houses down on the side. It used to be a pub right away at the top somewhere. So enjoy the rest of the, the photos, what I'm about to show you. Quite interesting. So yeah, that's basically it. The old photos are really quite interesting to see what was there many, many years ago. I mean, many of you might remember the road itself and what was there. But really cool. There was behind me right now, there's a wall. There used to be old industry right above there. I think there was some brickwork somewhere that was down here many, many years ago. But where we're coming in is a bridge in a minute. It's round the corner. Let's just go round to the bridge and I'll quickly show you that. You can just see this is actually the bridge many many years ago what was led round to the collieries itself this bridge is really old so you imagine crossing over from one side to the other all this land here was all coal mines so it was all colliery on the sides so if we just journey down you can just see over on the side there it says uh something Samwell council new cemetery for rowley regis opening 2022 i've always wondered about that actually so Coming, just coming around this bit here, you can just see the canal side which stretches all the way around and comes down that bit there. Got a little bit of a bay. 
So all of that there was all colliery land. Let's go and check out that in a minute. But just right behind me is quite interesting. I've noticed it's a few visits before, so I will quickly tell you this one. So right, a bit of interesting information. Rowley, 1605. And you can see there, we've got some signs. Rowley, old deal. It says Rowley gained uh, notoriety as the hiding place for Robert Wintour, one of the fleeing conspirators of the failed gunpowder plot. Caught and charged with high treason, he was hung, drawn and quartered. That is quite interesting, that. so you've got some information there, dating to 1605. So once more, Rowley does really date back a bit. There is lots of information about Rowley. Got the churches, got many more, so I will tell you a little bit of information about that, actually. But just coming round, I mean, you can just see how old this bridge is all together. A very old brick. Just imagine this was probably constructed early 1900s because you can just see the top of the, the top of the bridge right there. It's actually a bit rusty on the sides. Most of the old bridges within the black country date really old, late 1800s, early 1900s. But really quite interesting. That would have led over to coal mines many years ago. We're just right away up there. Let's go over to the other side. I will actually tell you about the collieries, what was there. All right, this is an information sign. So you can just see right the way there, got a map. So this is all the open space for the cemetery site itself. The canal side, which stretches at the side of the Dudley Number 2 canal. Right the way here it says uh, this site is divided into two areas. The cemetery and the open space, which is part of the Waterfall Lane site, of importance for nature conservation. The open space has a range of wildlife habitats, including grasslands and wildflower meadows, woodland and wetlands. The existing woodland and grassland habitats were improved in 2022 when the cemetery was built. Historically, the site was occupied by the Eagle Colliery, which operated between 1855 and 1910. Some of the land uh, was used as coal stockyard and another area became allotments until 1977, when it was reclaimed as a public open space. So you just see there, lots of information. Eagle Colliery, that is really quite interesting. So Eagle Collier is interesting actually, so this was all the space here. I did try and find some old photos on the internet about that and uh, looking up a bit, but I didn't actually find much. So if you do know much about that, drop it in the comments. I did find some aerial photos from historic England overlooking some back areas over that way. So as we journey down, there is more information, but you can just see all the woodland stretching all the way behind, very beautiful. You just imagine you do get quite a lot of wildlife over here, so if I just walk a bit forward I mean you can just see all the woodland on this side Very beautiful But check out that with the sunset Just appearing right the way at the back But just on the corner here, I mean it does stretch into a bit of a land here You can just see there is a pool developing on the corner here I've actually got some wildlife on there, can you see more wrens there's actually a duck in the corner. But it's a great place for other like things like insects, invertebrates. Really cool. So right, you can just see, great place for amphibians and other inhabitants. So this is actually the nature pond. So it says there, although two thirds of the freshwater species are supported by ponds, sadly around 50% of the UK's ponds were lost in the 20th century. So it's really important to protect them. You can just see this is a common place for toads, uh, newts, frogs, even tadpoles. So it's a good place for frogs to spawn here. You get dragonflies, damselflies, quite a lot. So you can just see these pools really do attract quite a lot of wildlife over to here. But just right away behind me, this is actually where Eagle Colliery was situated many years ago. Just pan around now. So you can just see there all the big open land where Eagle Colliery was situated. Really quite cool to see it's actually been still used at certain parts of it by industry. But it's nice to see that it's all still land for nature to take back, where man once dug out, taken back by nature. Really quite cool. So yes, go around the corner, there's a lot more history to tell you. So we'll go around there. So right, it's only a shorter video this evening because I thought this is one that I've never ever filmed and I thought I'll come down. There's a bit of interesting information in history. But I will tell you a bit about uh, Rowley in a little bit. Just round the corner now, you can just see, you've got the Topnell Bridge. On the right here, this will take you down another little bit of the path. 
and something very interesting what I've never ever knew about is a little basin just right the way down the bottom so let's go and check this out so you can just see journeying down we've got a Dudley number two canal just by the side of us and we've got even more signs here what does this one actually say this tells you about the uh, the canal so you've got information we'll tell you about this so there if we just pan around during the Industrial Revolution, the United Kingdom developed a canal network which linked the Industrial North and Midlands with the South. At its peak, the canal network stretched nearly 4,000 miles in length and allowed raw materials to be transported to a place of manufacture and finished goods to be transported to consumers more quickly and cheaply by land. From the opening of the Bridgewater Canal in 1761 until the 1830s, the canals went through a golden age. The arrival of the railways, however, signalled the beginning of the decline of the canals. So you imagine round oak steelworks using the, the rail lines to transport their stuff across. But imagine if the railway wasn't even there, they would have had to use the canals to transport all their stuff. It says there, the rate of decline increased with the building of National Road Network in the early 1900s, more roads, the beginning of cars, and in 1948 much of the canal network was nationalised. Canals remained uh, incredibly important to us, not only for the recreation and tourism, but the corridors for both wildlife and people, and also I'm going to say history because there is quite a lot remaining from the old bridges, remains what was here many, many years ago. So after the completion of the Dudley Canal in 1793, work started on a new 11 mile long canal known as the Dudley No. 2 Canal. The canal running alongside this site, it was built to link the original canal near Neverton to the Worcester and Birmingham Canal at Selly Oak. Lapper Tunnel used to run through Lapper Tunnel but it suffered many collapses so it had to close. So opened in 1798, that canal did just right away behind us. Unfortunately, as a result of a horrid construction in proximity to a geological fault and nearby mines, it suffered from subsidence and multiple collapses. A serious collapse in 1917 resulted in the final closure of the Lapa Tunnel and the end of a full in navigation of the canal. So you see there, it terminates at Horn Basin today. So quite a shame to see a chunk of our canal lost with history and much wildlife that would have been across that section. But if we just journey further down, there's something else really interesting. We haven't just got one pool, but there is actually another pool up here. Let's go and check out this one, right the way up here. So I think we have got to go this way, I think. I've actually come the wrong way, but you can just see the land a bit more better from this corner. You can just see industry units right away at the back. But just picture in your head for a moment a colliery even being here with all this flat land would be quite interesting to see what it really did look like back in the past even industry stretching further over the back over that way there have been quite a lot back in the days so many collieries we even had fly colliery in old deal picture on for you now so you can just see fly colliery really quite a lot but this journey by the side of me you can see plant identification it says there the wildflower meadow wild flower meadows are beautiful habitats that are great for wildlife as well as people Wild flowers come in a variety of colours, shapes and scents, providing a vibrant display to be enjoyed by people and creatures alike. So the wildlife meadows here, sown in 2022, enhancing the biodiversity of the area to attract and support wildlife. So you can see the potential things what are growing. Plants, meadow, buttercups, you see the grass, got a bit of daisies coming up. And these your other inhabitants, bumblebees, red admirals and slow worms. Wow, quite really interesting. So it's this journey back down. We've got even more to check out. So right, this is actually the other pond that I want to tell you about. This is actually the Canal Side Pond. This pond was constructed in 2022 as part of the Canal Side Cemetery development, creating a new habitat for a range of reptile plants and animals. So you can just see right the way there. Some interesting information about suds, something called suds, sediments, uh, nutrient uptake. So you can see a picture there. Interesting for kids to learn bits about the environment and uh, information. So it says there's something interesting. The pond acts as a temporary reservoir for surface drainage, water from the car park roads, paths and the roof of the office building, which is right away at the back. You just see the office building, which is there. Little bits of interesting information, but the ones what we're interested in, right away down here. 
So right, what you can see right now, this is so interesting. I've never ever noticed this before. Never in my life coming down the canal to even see this or coming over this side. What you can see here is actually a little basin many, many years ago stretching for the industry what was here and the collieries what once served. This is actually the remains of it. There's only a short amount of water which is draining all the way out of it. It's becoming very dry. So imagine over the rainfall it does technically go higher up. You see all the, the trash what's into here. It's got some things that people are throwing in but the basin comes to a little bit of an end there. So you can just see the industry what's on that side there. But the where it comes in, to see me right away out, is down the bottom from the canal comes in you can just see very old uh, what i'm pointing very old pole sticking right the way up that is really old that pole old uh, bits of brick there you see brick on the corner what i'm pointing to right the way there sort of being a bit visible but how cool is it seeing this i mean i've never knew about this many of you might have actually seen this before this little basin really so fascinating but i'll pitch on for you now so you can see the old map showing the basin on the canal marked as basin or wharf or whatever it is i can't remember if it's a basin or a wharf but right the way there how cool is that so you can just see there it says a uh, basin so it is basin so the history of the site and the canal arm the recorded history of rowley starts from the 12th century during this period, the village of Rowley had Regis added to its name to show that it belonged to the king, as it was part of the royal hunting grounds. Before the Industrial Revolution, most people combined looking after livestock with woodland management and metalwork. Many dwellings had their own forge, uh, which was uh, used for making nails and chains. The change from using charcoal to coke and coal in the production of iron sparked a huge increase in demand and as a result pits and collieries sprung up throughout the black country. The demand for coal was so intense that coal seams at many collieries were quickly exhausted and by the early 20th century these pits were closed down and filled in. The site was once occupied by the Eagle Colliery as shown on the map. It opened in 1855 and operated until 1910 under various owners. So I mean you can just see there, we've got the uh, the map here where we are right now. This is actually Eagle Colliery. You can just see the shafts right the way next to the canal. I mean it's very prosperous because they can get their goods and uh, travel all up and down the canal line. Stretching over our cross over the other side, this is actually Cherry Orchard. More collieries there, Hayden Hill Colliery stretching somewhere down the back. Lion Road, we've got uh, Old Lion Colliery, even more stuff there. Fly Colliery, what I showed you earlier on a photo. See the shafts, Garrett's Lane Pit, Old Hill Colliery. So you see Garrett's Lane, the bridge where you come down the bottom end of the canal line. Uh, Poker Lane Sawmills, Tiger Works. There's a lot on here what tells you much of the old information on the, the maps itself. So I really do like looking at the old maps to see what was there many years ago. So if I just blow this photo up for you now, you can just see what it really did look like back in the past. Check out that. But you can just see it on the, the camera right now. I mean, old works. Are these parts of collieries? But you can just see right there. I can just see a colliery wheel. The One of the winding shafts, what I'm pointing to right there. So this is actually what this all looked like many, many years ago. You wouldn't really think it, would you really? Because you've got all this now houses taken back all this land but you see what we're standing on right now would have been that which is really quite cool you can actually see the trains coming in and out there look at the trains well i do know you had a, a line somewhere down the back here and then you had the lines down by neverton the bumbleau line gwr what run many many years ago that actually served the collieries at the back uh, Windman and Colliery actually served. So you just see the trains were more an efficient way of getting goods to and from various sections of industry across here. But right away here, the canal arm, an offshoot of the Dudley Canal labelled basin on the 1904 map, was one of a number of loading basins built to move coal from collieries during the Industrial Revolution. A system of tramways uh, used to move coal from the pits to their own canal basins where the coal was loaded by hand onto waiting barges. 
It's making wonder, they did actually take some of this coal and go to Horn Basin. Horn Basin was also used for collieries many, many years ago. I think it was Old Horn Colliery what was actually using Horn Basin. So it says they're moving to other basins, that is really quite cool. The tramway referred on the map as the incline ran to the canal arm from the yew tree colliery which was located what is now uh, seen dole and close down along the main entrance driveway today the canal arm is a haven of wildlife having been improved as part of the creation of the canal side cemetery in open space in 2022 so there we go how about that something that i never ever knew so i thought i might have actually showed you this it is getting really windy so I can't really, really film too, too much as what I can today, so I'm glad I filmed what I can. But that, many years ago, you would think that would have actually been loading goods in and out to take to other places. That is so cool to see that is even still there and not even been filled in. But one more check out, you can just see the pool on the corner, stretching all the way down. Beautiful pool, so imagine it does bring wildlife. But one more check out of that. So you see it one more time. Wow, it's absolutely cool to see that. Really fascinating to see it. So, right, a bit of information on Rowley Regis. So, I thought I might tell you about this. So, Rowley Regis is a town and former municipal borough in Samwell, in the county of the West Midlands. It forms part of the area immediately west of Birmingham, known as the Black Country and encompasses the three Samwell Council wards of Blackheath, Crayley and Old Hill and Rowley. At 2011, the census there says the combined population of these wards was uh, 50,257. So, going all the way down. It says here, um, da -da 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 -da, more history about it. Uh, the history of rural villages can be tra traced back to the 12th century when a small village grew around the parish of St Giles, two miles southeast of Dudley. Rowley was part of the royal hunting grounds as mentioned earlier on that board. Regis was added to the name of Rowley in around 1140 to signify it was part of the Rowley belonging to the king. Along with the rest of the black country, Rowley began to see substantial development in the uh, mid-early um, 19th century, early to mid. Uh, in 1933, Rowley became a borough and incorporated the communities of Blackheath, Oldie and Crowley Heath. Uh, these places were all within the ancient parish of Rowley Regis. The county of Staffordshire there was in the Diocese of Worcester. The parish contained the manors of Rowley Regis, Rowley Summary, later became, the latter being part of the barony of Dudley, but the extents of these manors and the relationship between them are not clear. Around the time that Rowley Regis became a borough, uh, house building accelerated in both the public and private sectors. So the St Giles Church at the top um, on Church Road is not the original church in Rowley Regis. The church built in 1840 to succeed the original medieval building was found to be unsafe and condemned in 1900. The next church, built in 1904, was burnt down in 1913, some believing the fire to have been started by uh, suffragettes or local striking steel workers. Wow, it's quite interesting to see that the church was actually rebuilt several times there. But that's about it, lots of interesting information, beautiful sceneries and sights on the cemetery side here, where the canal used to run all the way down on this little basin just down to the bottom. But yeah, that's about it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Lots of more interesting information. What we're going to do now, head all the way back down. Enjoy the rest of the cinematics. And I will see you in a bigger video soon. Shame it's not that big, this video. But it is one more interesting to show you what was here. But there we go. See you soon. The Midlands Outdoors out.